With the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon drawing ever closer, my anticipation and excitement for the Pokemon series in general has shot through the roof. All throughout the year, the buzz of the Pokemon's 20th anniversary has enveloped me, made me nostalgic, and made me appreciate how excellent the franchise really is as a whole. I started at the beginning of the year in Generation 3 with a goal to play through all of the main series games and capture all 721 Pokemon. The journey was epic and completely unforgettable. It made me realize how awesome Gen 3 was despite what I had thought previously. I came to love so many new Pokemon and it made me appreciate the other pieces of the franchise I had initially wrote off. So to celebrate the end of this journey, I thought I'd give a list of my top 25 favorite Pokemon from the bunch. If you don't see your favorites here, let me know about them in the comments section below. Number 25, Mr. Mime. This one is a bit of an odd choice, I admit. I'd always thought he was such a weird and obscure and unused Pokemon. The anime cemented this a lot too. He was just a goofy character. Earlier this summer, I got the sudden urge to binge watch all of Tamashi Hiroka's wonderful channel of Pokemon videos while grinding through Gen 4. For some reason, she really had a thing for Mr. Mime and Mime Jr. They definitely began to grow on me at that point. What sealed the deal was her stream of Pokemon Blue version. She got me to love the Mr. Mime she used, nicknamed Vegas. He's just got this cute design and this vibrant personality. Also, its shiny is awesome. I'm really looking forward to using one in my shiny run of Omega Ruby. Number 24, Meowstic. This adorable kitty Pokemon was one of my main brawlers in my most recent playthrough of Pokemon Y. Its resilience and its helpful set of ghost and psychic moves were a very deadly combination. It's a very fashionable looking Pokemon with a certain devious flair that I just love. And I'm a sucker for cute cat Pokemon. Number 23, Fennekin. For years of my life, I thought that every game beyond Pokemon Gold was just a sort of soulless cash grab at the popularity of Pokemon. I knew that the newer generations were the ones keeping it alive, and that was cool, but I just wanted the thing that I loved so much from back in the day. When X and Y got revealed, it was a crazy concept to think that we're going to finally get to play a real 3D Pokemon game and run around in that kind of world. It aroused my curiosity and wonderment once more. I went and stood in line at a midnight release at Walmart where my friend worked for the lunch, even though I had gotten the poster in my pre-order from GameStop. It was a lot of fun to experience the boom of a brand new Pokemon game once more, given that everyone had to learn the secrets just like when we were kids. It was reminiscent of my years on the playground, swapping rumors, talking about all the new Pokemon environments. But one thing had remained a constant after all of these years. I knew I had to pick the fire starter just like I always did. Fennekin was super cute, and I loved training it as one of my very first Kalos Pokemon. Brixen was cool too, and I don't hate Dalfox like everyone else seems to. I think the sorcerer theme between them was excellent, and it really fit well with the ninja and the night themes of the other starters. I guess what I love most about Fennekin is it got me back into loving a series that I had long neglected and reinvigorated my childhood passion. Number 22, Vulpix. Vulpix just has this sort of fluffy cuteness that just makes you want to hug it and love it. It can also have a fiery attitude, which is why I love it. I always loved the fire typing in Gen 1, and this is one of the better Pokemon from back then. Who doesn't love this cute little fox? Number 21, Chespin. My first run of Pokemon X was actually kind of a nightmare. I constantly put it down and gave up, and I really didn't get my full Gen 6 experience until a few months ago when I finally made it back after playing all the other games in order. I'd seen the anime at this point, and Clemens Chespin had just made me see the Pokemon in a whole new light. My choice of starter was clear this time. I didn't really care for the Froakie line as I mostly thought they were overrated, so I chose the lovable and comical Chespin. I nicknamed him Lance and before I knew it, my adorable little knight had grown all the way into a chestnut. I'll never forget those opening hours we spent together as they were some of the most magical of my entire journey. Number 20, Xerneas. Even though my latest run was a Pokemon Y version, I always loved the majestic, beautifully designed Xerneas and his mythology, a creature that brings life wherever it runs, wild, free, and untamed. Its design was just so damn elegant, and its tall commanding stature was what drew me in. There's just some kind of magic to Xerneas that inspires my mind in creative ways. Number 19, Noibat. Noibat is a Pokemon that holds close to my heart, not only because its dex number is my birthday, but it's also my very first shiny I ever legitimately attained by my own means. I think it's an adorable bat Pokemon, which isn't easy to do since most of the regional bats like Zubat just come off as annoying. Something about this being one of the last Pokemon I had to obtain in the Kalos region, and the very end of my journey to catch them all, just makes this guy so special to me. Number 18, Miltank. 
Here's another Pokemon that I recently fell in love with, this time thanks to the Super Carlin Brothers and their gaming channel. Their Nuzlocke series featured this shiny mill tank named Nova. It was such a beautiful cow and it made me just want one of my very own. Fortunately, I did get one in my Nuzlocke series. They only have a 5% drop rate versus the 20% of the Magnemite, the other Pokemon that I didn't have at the time. Luckily, we caught old Romani though and she was a great leader of my gold team. I came to really love that mill tank in that Nuzlocke run and it's one of my favorites now. Number 17, Mew. Mew is one of the most mysterious Pokemon of the first generation. Many knew of Mew, but few knew how to attain it. Of course, Mew became even more popular after the first movie, but there was a time when none of us really knew anything about it. Nowadays, Mew is just another cutie that I love for other reasons. First, it's just fun to teach it any move through TM. You could have the ultimate Pokemon with Mew, and that was just fun to run through the game with. In fact, on the Virtual Console release, that's exactly what I did, and when Gen 7 hits, that Mew is coming to the modern age. Second was that Mew's glitch is just so random and fun to perform. I remember my friend Kudron didn't even know about that glitch until more recently on the 3DS and I had to show him all these years later. Third is just how majestic and mysterious Mew is. Its history is spoken of in game, but only in books and whispers. It's all rumors and scandal, just like in real life. It was like Mew's way of playing tricks on us. Overall, Mew holds a special place in my heart for being one of the most elusive Pokemon of the first generation, and one of the last Pokemon I needed to complete my decks back in the day. Number 16, Cyndaquil. I'll never forget the Christmas Eve of 2000. I was in my pajamas, opening up all my gifts. I had begged my parents for months about Pokemon Gold. They knew how much I loved the games, and that night, I unwrapped it. The shiny box, the anticipation of all I'd heard on the playground, everything was leading to this moment. Little did I know it would become one of my favorite Pokemon games, and one of my favorite games of all time. Of course, I fell into the tradition, which became tradition here, of choosing the cool fire type as my starter. That's why I love Cyndaquil. He followed me through the first steps of my journey. He was always a great companion in the Johto region, and it's rare for me not to choose him at the start of any new playthrough. Koalava and Typhlosion are excellent Pokemon as well, it's kind of a toss up between the three really, but this little guy represents all that it is when an epic journey begins to unfold. Number 15, Pidgeot. In high school I completed both Gen 1 and 2 catching every Pokemon possible, and Celebi through Game Shark, of course. During the Gen 1 run, I chose one of my old standards as a member of my team until the end, Pidgeot. The Pidgey line is your standard regional bird line, but out of all of those, these stand as classic. Pidgeot and his rest move, as well as some sick flying moves like wing attack, fly attack, and sky attack made him a force to be reckoned with. Plus I grinded every member of my core team in that run to level 100. Pidgeot is just an awesome design and concept for a bird Pokemon. This was also the first time I'd ever rewatched the entire original anime, so there was a special connection I have to Pidgeot because it takes me not only back to my childhood, but also back to my high school years as well. Number 14, Camerupt. My Camerupt Kamalon was a strong fighter in my Gen 3 adventure. He built a strong sort of connection to a badass volcano cow who wrecks shit with his eruption move. Being part of my team in that run convinced me that Gen 3 was actually pretty great, and also him picking up the slack of being my fire buddy was a monumental task. Luckily Camerupt has ground moves like Earthquake too. He's such a joy to use and such a brilliant Pokemon design wise. Number 13, Snorlax. Snorlax is a tank, a brick wall of defense, and I love that. I remember back in the day when I discovered the missing no glitch, one of the first Pokemon to pop up was a level 99 Snorlax, which I caught with an Ultra Ball. I became relatively well known at my school for being the kid with a level 100 Snorlax. It was infamous. I also remember when I went to Disney World when I was in second grade, I got a Snorlax plush from one of the stands. I still have it and my Pikachu, and I loved it both dearly. Snorlax was an overpowered Pokemon in Generation 1 with moves like Hyper Beam and Rest. That's part of why I loved him. Also, the whole scenario of waking him up and having a challenging time to capture him was very satisfying when you actually got one. For me, there's just something special about this big guy. I used him a lot in my Generation 1 run, and he remains a force to be reckoned with on my team to this day. Number 12, Haunter. I love Haunter. It's really a toss up, but Gengar is the Pokemon I spent the most time with in Gen 4, ironically enough. I love his trickster nature, his crooked smile, and his sinister laugh, and that badass hypnosis powers in the game. Both stand out as some of the most iconic ghost Pokemon ever because of their shadowy design and their memorable appearances in the anime. Number 11, Ninetales. One of the most beautifully designed Pokemon ever, in my opinion, is Ninetales. 
The kitsune Japanese mythology, the lush, elegant tales that flow in the air, the amazing firepower, and that fucking shiny though. Bullpix is cool, but Ninetales is on fire! It's always been my dream to have a shiny one, and I'm currently in the process of grinding for one right now. Here's hoping. Other than that, I just think this is an awesome Pokemon. It always felt super powerful like Arcanine, but for some reason I didn't see a lot of people show it love back in the day, which is pretty sad. Number 10, Maractus. Speaking of underrated Pokemon, what is all the hate on Maractus? I know the metagame is filled with IVs and stats and Maractus is apparently not great and blah blah blah. Everyone lets that distract them from one of the cutest, most brilliant designed Pokemon ever. I adore Maractus, and really it has all the cool grass type moves. Also the shiny is pretty great and it incorporates orange and purple, two of my favorite colors. I just love the rhythmic cactus theme. This thing is just so adorable. I think it deserves not to be so overlooked and underrated. So next time you see somebody make fun of it, give Maractus some love instead. Number 9, Dragonite. My very first shiny I legitimately ever obtained was a Dragonite on my Pokemon White version that I'd bought used. It also had my shiny Charizard on it and a bunch of legendaries that were hacked. But those two I verified to be real. Outside of that, Dragonite was always a big deal to me growing up. The mysterious gigantic one at Bill's Lighthouse used to scare me, but I also felt bad for it too because it was just looking for a friend. When I was in third grade, I brought my favorite Dragonite card with us on a field trip and I accidentally threw it away with my lunch sack. I was devastated because I loved that card so much. The original Gen 2 sprite is my favorite iteration of Dragonite's style, as it's more cartoonish and less realistic like the 3D models of X and Y. In my Generation 1 run, my Dragonite was my favorite core member, as well as in the Gold Nuzlocke I did more recently. Overall, I love my level 100 shiny Dragonite and the Pokemon in general. He's just this great sort of mythical dragon Pokemon that takes a lot of hard work to get to, and I can appreciate the fine result. Number 8, Flygon. The third generation of Pokemon is the absolute furthest back you can transfer up from, and that's why I started my journey there more recently. I had a lot of time to appreciate the Hoenn Dex and its many great Pokemon. Completing it was no easy feat, but right alongside me the whole way was my trusty Flygon. At first, however, I was very confused because I didn't know how to find Vibrava. Then I realized that it evolved out of this derpy looking first evolution called Trapinch. Once I actually had my Flygon though, he was such a critical and cool member of my team throughout Hoenn. His sleek design and his badass movesets made him a central piece in my realization that Hoenn was actually an amazing region, despite my ignorant childish criticism of past years. Pokemon like Flygon that made me come around to loving the modern games. Number 7, Ampharos. Like most people, my first run in with Ampharos was at Jasmine's Lighthouse. Much later on I came to find out that Mareep evolved into it when trying out different Pokemon through my many playthroughs of Pokemon Gold. Some of my favorite Pokemon were electric types back in the day, probably because Ash and the anime. Not to mention it was a heavy hitter with moves like Zap Cannon, as well as being pretty agile. Ampharos also has a cute factor, but more in the vein of Dragonite, cute, badass, and deadly all at once. The yellow and black design, as well as the little ball on its tail, made it stand out. I've pretty much used it every time since then that I've ran through gold, including my playthrough of Heart Gold. It's a Pokemon I love having on my team. Number 6, Amora. If I asked people what their favorite fossil type Pokemon is, most would answer with Aerodactyl, Kabuto, or maybe even Tyrant, but my favorite is a Pokemon I fell in love with in my most recent playthrough of Pokemon Y, Amora. It's just so adorable. And really, outside of this, I'm not too fond of many ice types. Amora became a really great member of my team. While Aurorus is the one I spent a fair chunk of time with in the game, and is the better Pokemon stat-wise and defensively, I think the pre-evolution is one of the cutest Pokemon out there. It's much like my Gengar and Hunter situation, though the better is Aurorus for moves too, with heavy hitters like Blizzard, Ice Beam, Hyper Beam, and Ancient Power. But to me, nothing will ever match my excitement of reviving Amora and finding out it's one of my favorites of all time. Number 5, Ho-Oh. Clearly, with Gold being one of my favorite games in this series, this was going to show up. I don't dislike Lugia or the Legendary Birds of Kanto either, in fact I think they're brilliant. The legendary Dogs too, but this title Pokemon is just so incredibly mesmerizing. One look at it and its majestic design becomes very clear to you. Then when you see it in battle it fights with the intensity of a thousand suns and you realize, oh, this thing is a badass too. 
His sprite also commands respect and fear. Based on the phoenix, one of my all-time favorite mythical creatures, Horo appears in the first episode of the anime as an unknown Pokemon. This always made my head spin with possibilities as a kid. Much like Mew, it added a very mysterious air that made me want to know more. Pokemon Gold, when I finally got to catch him before heading off to the Elite Four, I realized just how truly amazing he was. I've used him in mostly every playthrough since. He just sticks with me, resonating and bringing me the wonder and eternal happiness his power grants. Number 4, Lantern. And now for my favorite Generation 2 Pokemon, Lantern. Back in middle school, I was really into playing through Pokemon Gold. I remember wanting to do a run of the game where I started with any Pokemon I wanted thanks to my handy Game Shark. I was trying to find a new electric type and stumbled across Chinchu. It was a Pokemon that I thought was a Gen 3 Pokemon since I knew so little about it, and I noticed the water electric typing and I thought that was one of the coolest dual typings ever. That made me fall in love with this little guy, and when it evolved I was baffled by how cool Lantern was. I take on the deep sea angler, but much much cuter. This Pokemon is a unique badass and I will always love it and choose it to this day. It even helped me kick ass in my Nuzlocke series when we were down a member. For all the great fun I've had, Lantern earns this high spot here. Number 3, Sceptile. Oh boy, my Generation 3 run really made me love this guy. How was I so blind to not have liked him as a kid? I chose Trico because I wasn't the biggest fan of Mudkip. Normally I'd choose the fire type, but I messed around with Torchic in my first run of Hoenn in high school. Anyways, I love how Sceptile is like the samurai of Pokemon, not accounting for the Oshawott line other than maybe Duat. His signature move, Leaf Blade, is one of my all-time favorite moves now. I loved him so much because of his false swipe that every time I transferred Kalop, he would always help me wrangle up some of those pesky Pokemon I, c I hadn't caught yet. Out of all of my current Pokemon, he's the one I've loved the longest and he's battled for me in every Pokemon League ever since Hoenn. The special part is that he just hit level 100 at the same time as all of my Gen 6 Pokemon when we were grinding the Elite Four to evolve one of the last Pokemon I needed. In a way, Cal represents my entire Pokemon journey of this year, and for that and how badass he is, my Sceptile earns this top tier rank on my list. Number 2, Raichu. Were you expecting Pikachu? That makes sense, I love Pikachu. I have my very first Pokemon plush of him, the keychain that I've had ever since I was a kid proudly hangs on my keyring to this day, and both pocket Pikachu devices I had as a kid I held so dearly that when they ended up missing, I was devastated, especially nowadays when they aren't cheap on eBay. My first system of all time was a Pikachu Pichu Silver Game Boy Color that I loved until it was stolen later in my life. I'll never forget it. It was the week before my 8th birthday in July of the year 2000. I'd begged my parents for, since my last birthday for a Game Boy and Pokemon. My mom got home on that fateful day, and she said she had a little something early for my birthday. I could still picture the two boxes, both of them which I still have, my Pokemon Red and my very own Game Boy Color. I was super ecstatic. I played it all night and got to Cerulean City before passing out. I even caught a Pikachu in the Viridian Forest. It's one of my all-time favorite childhood memories. But you know what? As much as I love Pikachu, it was Raichu who ended up winning my heart later on. He had the same badass and cute aesthetic. I loved getting my Pikachu to finally evolve, even though the anime told me that was taboo. Once I had Raichu in my high school run, I began to realize how much more awesome he was. Pikachu is an absolute classic Pokemon, but when it comes to design, strength, and overall flair, I have to give the point to Raichu. He's just the bigger, more badass version of Pikachu, and I love his tough and adorable personality. Give me that Thunderstone any day. Before we get to number one, I've got some honorable mentions here. My champ and executor, I really ended up falling in love with them in Pokemon Go. Tangela is a very underrated Gen 1 Pokemon. I love its silly, quirky design, and I wish it was more well remembered. Aerodactyl is a Pokemon I thought was badass in Generation 2. Lances is a tough customer with its moveset designed to counter all of its weaknesses, along with its rock flying type being a killer combo. Espeon and Umbreon are two of my favorite evolutions, not to mention Cloud from the Nuzlocke. Misdreavious is a cool Gen 2 Pokemon that doesn't get a lot of press. Its evolution is tight too. Luxray is an excellent Gen 4 Pokemon, one of my favorites from that generation. Duat. I don't like Samurai. Fight me. He's not bipedal like he should be. He's a Samurai, and it should have been amazing. Luckily Duat is still cool, and I love him. Litleo. People hate on him for some reason. He's fucking adorable, and I used him in my first run of X. Pancha. He's an amazing Pokemon. Mine was named Banana, and he helped me kick all leagues of ass in Kalos. 
Serena's is adorable too, a more ship for life. And the number one spot goes to Charmander. Out of all 720 Pokemon, I'll never forget my very first. Charmander was the one I chose to get Charizard since I had Red Version, but he'd always been my favorite of Ash's Pokemon in the anime. Talk about fucking adorable. I always said if I could have a real Pokemon, it would be a Charmander. He's also my favorite color, orange, and his design is simple yet epic. He's like a baby dinosaur dragon thing. He was always my favorite starter, and he started the fire starter trend I continue to this day. Charmander started my Pokemon journey and helped me get through Kanto, and much later in Kalos, I chose him all over again. He was also one of the hardest Pokemon to find where I live in Pokemon Go. I remember the day when I discovered that there was a nest of them in Discovery Park about 40 minutes away. I was jazzed! Banana and I went there so many times until we both finally had Charizard. It was one of my favorite places to go, and one of my favorite memories in Pokemon Go. When I was a kid, my brother drew me this really excellent sketch of Charmander too, and he gave it to me later as a gift. It's one of the coolest things I still have from my childhood. God, the episode of the anime where Ash and Charmander are all snowed into that cave and they have to keep each other warm. It's heartbreaking. He's the most classic of all Pokemon to me. If I ever need to think of a Pokemon, Charmander always comes to mind first. Maybe it's just because you never forget your first, but the sheer amount of times I played Red Version and chose Charmander made me really attached to the little guy. Sure, I used the other two starters in later runs, but they never stacked up the same way as my little fire buddy. Words fail me when it comes to Charmander. I love him, and he trips my nostalgia trigger. He reminds me of a simpler time when Pokemon was our lives. He was the one that inspired me to be the best like no one ever was. Also, that's my favorite part of the intro when he gets licked by the hunter. Anyway, something about him brings me back to the moments of my childhood when Pokemon was the biggest phenomena ever. For bringing such love, nostalgia, and memories to my heart, Charmander easily lands at my number one spot for my favorite Pokemon of all time. Did you like my list? Maybe I missed an amazing Pokemon or one of your all-time favorites. Let me know in the comments below. Just remember to keep it classic, and I'll catch y'all next time.